place to be. Dances such as kumbe, bambula, quadrille, folk dances, calypsos can be found documented in the various records as Europeans marveled and investigated the life of Africans in the various estates and urban towns. The top image is the image of the Mambura dance Christmas. Africans in the best dress come out uh, to dance the Bambola. You see the big drama on the left. On the next slide across from that is the Bambola as it's done today by tradition bearers who are passing on this tradition to reconstruct this African dance form. And then we have the quadrille. And of course, each island has its distinct characteristic, and St. Croix is the French, and St. Thomas is the flat German. Food ways, recipes and ways of cooking. Those of you that have been to the Virgin Islands, pâtés, fried fish, jam cake, red pea soup, karu, mafe, wilts, kam, sauce, salt fish, fungi, tarts, black cake, Vienna cakes, sugar cakes, sweet breads, and jabons. I went to Holland for a meeting the other night and she brought out a cake and she gave me a Danish name that I, I would not dare try to pronounce. And I tasted it and I said, but this is sweet bread. And sweet bread, of course, uh, today uh, more um, common around the Christmas time and special holidays like Easter and special occasions is prepared. I went to the website for the Department of Tourism and there they have Red Grout. A Danish name I cannot pronounce, but it's part of the Virgin Islands cuisine today. And we use guavas instead of strawberries. The festival arts, Christmas festivals, the Virgin Islands Carnival, Fourth of July celebration, and all the various other aspects that celebrates this rich cultural heritage of African traditions based on secret societies, of masquerading traditions, of the European courts and African court traditions that emerged into these festivals where we select kings and queens and prince and princesses and all the pageantry that goes with the festival arts are formed in reference to needlecraft and crochet and embroidery, adinga and tat tatin was some of the more traditional 19th and 20th century occupations of our mothers and grandmothers. Today these Crafts are dying. Belief systems, referred to as superstitions, but I refer to them as uh, spiritual beliefs, cultural ceremonies associated with holidays, observances, funerals and burials, bush bat, bushes, herbs, obey, African religion, hurricane supplication day, the oldest holiday in the Virgin Islands, we celebrated. You prayed before the hurricane, or you asked God not to send a hurricane. Uh, our aspects of our belief systems, our burial traditions, and in the middle is my aunt, who is speaking to visitors at the Folklife Festival about the tradition of using bush medicine. Language, local dialect and language forms have come, you have come, and to the Dutch and English Creole found in the Virgin Islands. Sayings and proverbs, today for you, tomorrow for me. Monkey who are tree to climb. Also were aspects of how elders transmitted to each other, to their children and to others in the society, moral principles of doing good in life. Our material culture is vast. Most societies, our flora and fauna, uh, historic structures, uh, windmills, forts, great houses, water and dam, the few that remain, and vernacular structures of very important elements in our landscapes. Crafts and expressions like basket making, broom making, furniture designing, carnival clowns, and other creative expressions are part of this 
inventory of Virgin Islands traditions. Occupations such as masonry, joinery, cabinet making, fishing, farming, carpentry, blacksmithing, dressmaking, and tailoring were very prominent occupations for our grandparents and great grandparents. Heroes and heroines, the Virgin Islands culture, as many heroes and heroines, particularly of African descent, whose personal contributions and sacrifices gave us the human rights and the justices that we enjoy today. Tradition bearers are defined by the Virgin Islands Cultural Heritage Institute as those individuals who bear the culture of these islands, who practice the culture in specific, excuse me, in specific forms or is renowned and exemplary in what they bear. The Institute went as far as a vision and a plan for 2012, so I think my presence here this afternoon comes full circle as it relates to where we're going in the future. And one of the uh, main missions when I took this job was to explore the possibility of creating cultural centers. And yesterday we talked about cultural centers that came on the floor. And in 1996, this has been on our uh, request for each fiscal year in the territory to acquire sites where we will have permanent sites where Virgin Islanders and visitors alike could come and study the rich heritage of these islands. We looked at various properties that would possibly do that, and we lost this particular building owned by Alton Adams to a private a corporation. We also looked at the possible expansion of the Door Center and through Senator Wayne James, the adjacent property, uh, the Duran Tower site, which is on the bottom, the empty lot now. The building above was what it looked like. It was acquired, and we trust that we'll be able to expand uh, the cultural activities uh, for the intended purpose adjoining both sites. Contentment Heritage Village is a project with Federal Highway that looks at one of the first Afro-Cruisian villages on St. Croix. Post emancipation that Mr. Tyson and Bill Taylor worked on collaboratively and supported uh, through the Institute and other entities for interpretation. And that brings me to the question of the search of identity, the protection and interpretation of a cultural heritage. The Virgin Islands State Historic Preservation Office is mandated by the federal government, the National Park Service, to develop a sustainable preservation plan every five years. I don't have the most recent cover, but this is the 203 208, which outlines how we should protect and manage our cultural resources, inventory them, and all the various aspects of preservation that's important for good preservation planning. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to visit Mexico on a quest really to of identity as it relates to the African presence in the New World prior to the voyages of Columbus. This is a colossal stone head in one of the sites I visited called the Olmeca culture, which is the mother culture of Mexico, which some scholars believe are linked to North Africa. And in ancient times, these Africans crossed the Atlantic and made a significant contribution to South America. Our early history begins with the native inhabitants of the island, the Caribs, the Tainos, Arawakan, 2500 BC, archaeological evidence show migratory patterns. We have the beginning of a Taino culture, 700 archaeological evidence of Tainos, so called Arawaks, and in 1425, Caribs reached the Virgin Islands in their westmost territorial expansion. 
And that brings us to South River. Cape of Arrows, Columbus, and his second voyage, 1492, enters this particular area, sends his men in to look for fresh water, and the first native European encounter transpires. Of course, this slide would be wrong because he never touched land. But for most paintings, you find him on the land. And he did touch land in other places of the Caribbean. The voyages of Columbus are the fate of the indigenous people. We you know today that the native population of the Virgin Islands is not of this ethnic group. However, in our bloodlines, uh, their blood run in our veins as various individuals through the various centuries and through unions, this bloodline continues. So as far as I'm concerned, they still live within us. South River today is a National Historic Park and Ecological Reserve. It's the only co-managed federal local partnership that I know of for that.